So there are a number of complications that do occur um, after brain injury and um, they're very wide ranging. As you can imagine, the, the brain is so dif diverse in what it, it manages and controls for the rest of our body. Um, but for instance, one, one particular complication that um, happens quite frequently after brain injury is the development of post-traumatic seizures. But who is likely to get seizures? Um, what is the underlying pathology um, that contributes to that vulnerability or susceptibility uh, is, is still something that we're working out in, in the research realm, understanding the, those processes. There are some clinical um, factors that I think most people agree upon that do contribute to risk for seizure. So first of all, the severity of the injury is very important. People with more severe injuries tend to be more likely to uh, have a seizure. People who have uh, penetrating head injury um, as opposed to what we call a closed head injury where there's not a, a fracture of the skull, there's not a, uh, an open uh, head wound. And even for people who have a closed head injury, uh, but they wind up having um, the type of injury that requires a surgical intervention, that intervention in and of itself, while life-saving, is also considered a risk factor for brain injury because again, you've gone in and opened opened up uh, the, the skull cavity, uh, breached the dural uh, covering that encases the brain, um, and those types of manipulations um, can place somebody at a little bit more risk for, for uh, seizures. But what we're finding is that there are some genetic factors and traits um, that uh, are seemingly important uh, with regard to risk for seizures and fit well with what we think might be involved in the pathology um, that's um, in line with how seizures develop after brain injury.